What's up guys? In this video, we are going to be building a AM5 Ryzen 7700X gaming PC. I like to install everything on the motherboard first off the PC case. That way it eliminates the chances of doing any warping or cracking of the motherboard. Firstly, let's do the CPU. The AM5 is kind of like the LG A1700, but upside down. Press down and you still release to the right. But instead of going up, it comes back down this way. And then instead of the lever here, you have a lever just here at the top. And you just lift it up simply like that. On your CPU, you're going to see a notch at the top and a notch at the bottom. And there's a golden triangle in the top left hand corner right there. Grab your CPU and you want to align that golden triangle and these two notches with the socket. And if you look at this, there's a golden triangle in the top left hand corner there. On this, you also see a triangle there as well. So make sure you align your CPU carefully. Then just grab your CPU and set it in. Be very careful and just make sure all the notches are lined up and your CPU is seated properly. Then put this down and from here, you got to ensure that this part here clips over the tab at the top here, right? Then just simply press down. This will probably pop off. That's fine. Just like that. And that's it. CPU installed. We open our RAM slots. We always use these two RAM slots first. It even tells you on the motherboard which ones to use first. Now, this is our DDR5 RAM. Now, a good rule of thumb to follow with your RAM is usually the writing will read that way. So, if it doesn't, or if you're unsure, always just align your slot here with the RAM slot. You have a notch in the center and then you have a open notch here. Just line that up and then just press down. The next one, there we are. Next, let's install our M2 SSDs. Firstly, we have our Lexa here and then we have our other team group SSD right here. We need one M2 screw for this slot here because we don't have a screw there, but we don't need an M2 screw up the top here because this will simply cover it. So you undo these two screws here, which I've already undone and simply lift. You'll have a protective sticker on here, peel that off. You see open notch there, you also have a notch in your M2 slot right there. You line them up like so, and you install on an angle slightly and just push in until it clicks in. The screw here goes into that thread. So what you wanna do now is just line up your screws there we go perfect just snug you don't want to go too tight and over tighten it just nice and snug then we have this one down here same deal slot slot match it and install slightly on an angle and install press down and screw down cpu ram and ssds are installed now i've already installed the m2 wi-fi card in a short if you want to see how I did that, be sure to check out the short in the top right hand corner right now. All M2 Wi Fi cards are installed the same. It's just how you go about routing your cable after, how you want to hide it, and then route it to the rear IO shield so that the antennas can plug in there. That is our motherboard completely installed, ready to go. Now let's grab our case and we'll pull it apart so we can install our motherboard. Here is our case. The first thing we want to do is undo these two screws here and then slide this back and remove it. We want to remove both side panels. You have a little lever here, just pull on it and it unclips and you remove it. Same for this side here, lever here, you just push on it and that unclips. The front here simply comes off by pulling towards you. You do it with both hands, press on here with your thumb and pull forward. We're removing this because we have the accessory kit with an actual screen here. So that's pretty cool. Same for here, just pull it off towards you. Next, we need to remove this panel here so we're able to install our power supply and also remove the power supply cage so that we can install our power supply as well. So grab your screwdriver, 
and undo these four screws. There's one here, 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 and here. This panel just helps to hide all your power supply cables, which is a really good addition. To remove this power supply cage, to install your power supply, you have these two screws here. And you notice these slots here as well. You're able to install your power supply lower if you want to. So I'll remove these two screws. It's already loose now, but it's still hanging there because of the tabs that are hanging. Now I'll lift it up and then pull out and that comes out. Now we're ready to install our motherboard. These cables are kind of pre-routed already because I was testing this case earlier, but you can kind of see what I have done here. So we just push those cables through and that's how our cables are going to be routed, but we'll tidy everything up once we get there. You got an SSD bracket here and an SSD bracket here for 2.5 inch drives. Grab our motherboard that's already put together right here. Ensure that all your stands are in. So looking at your motherboard, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, total of eight. You have a motherboard stand through here, but you notice how the SSD is in the way. So we're going to have to remove that just to get that stand in. All right, so we'll get the motherboard in first. We'll line up our rear IO panel. Ensure you line up all your screws. It's all lined up now. Here's the accessory kit that comes with the case. Here's all your hard drive screws and rubber mounts. Here's all your motherboard screws right here. Let's just install the uh, motherboard. We need to remove the SSD just so we can get in our last motherboard screw. Quickly remove this. We'll leave it here for a second. We will now install our power supply. Here's your cage and here's our power supply. So we'll grab our power supply. Our ATX is hardwired. They call this semi-modular. Everything else is modular except for the ATX, which is hardwired. I've always been a big fan of EVGA power supplies. They just are very well built and they are very reliable as well. Let's plug in everything. We have one SATA, which is here. We'll plug that in. We have two GPU cables here and here. So let's plug them in there Two, And then we have our CPU. Let's install our cage. Our power supply is going to be facing this way. We want to push all the hot air out and then exhaust it out of the case. So the way you're going to install your power supply is like this with your fan towards the mesh. You slide it up just like that. You line up all your screw holes and then just install it. Perfect. Always install in a cross pattern. Now to reinstall the power supply. Remember, we had these two latches here that went into one of these four pairs. We're going to put on the highest one. Hopefully we can still get a 120 fan in. So the latches go towards the front of the case. Push it in. I'm going to install mine on the highest point. That's it. And it just dangles there like that. It hangs. In my particular case, I will not be able to install a front fan because this power supply is a little bit longer than normal. We had to install two screws back in at the front here. When we took this apart, there were two screws that went here and here. Power supply in, so let's uh, route some cables. You see the gap at the back there? You have a hole. We want to push all our cables through that gap. And just push it through and we guide it on through. Be uh, careful, do it nice and gently. We've got one SATA cable, one CPU and two GPU. All our cables through now and let's do a little bit of cable management. Our SATA is just going to sit here. Our CPU will come up through here like this. There's a little gap here. We'll push it on through so we can plug that in. As for our GPU cables, this will go up. We'll come through the front, push them through here so they can plug into the graphics card once we do that. Our ATX is going to be about here, 24 pin. So that's going to go there as well. 
here is our power cable that is just underneath here so we'll push that through there and then we also have our HD audio cable right here it comes from the front and just plugs in there let's plug a couple of cables in so they're out of the way another thing I want to point out is you notice how there is a power cable here and the power cable routes here that's because you're able to plug your power cable here rather than inside here because they have made the power supply installed inside the cage inside the case you would now plug in your power supply cable in the back here which kind of makes for a really cool design because it would kind of be weird if you had to route your power supply cable inside your case somehow and then this cable from the power supply will now plug into your power supply so here it is right here and if we turn this up right you can see there is our power supply port right so you just have to plug that in just like this and then you leave that turned on let's do the cpu because it's just up here you have tabs on the top and plug it in make sure they both get plugged in it splits into two four pins your atx is here with the tabs on this side here so we'll plug that in now there we go Next, we have our Type-C and our USB 3. Our USB 3 is just here, and our cutout tab is on this side of the plug. So when you plug this in, make sure your tab here is on that side, and then plug it in. Make sure you line up the pins first, don't just plug it in. Now Type-C only plugs in one way, so make sure you line it up carefully. There we go. Next, let's plug in our HD audio. Always a pin missing. So line that up with your HD audio in the bottom left hand corner, it usually is, and plug it in. Lastly, our power cable. All we have here is a power cable and power LED. Your power LED is always in your top left hand corner, and then your HDD is below it. Positive is always on the left, so make sure you plug that in right. It really doesn't matter for power switch because there is no polarity for power switch. You can just plug it in either way and it will work. They are the only cables we need to plug in because all we have is a power switch right there and there is an LED light inside of it. That's it. There's nothing else to plug in. So now let's tidy up these cables. Tidy that up with some zip ties. flat then high so there we go before I cut these zip ties I'm going to test fit the graphics card just to ensure that it does fit right and it will sit the way I want and my cables are the right way around check out this card guys all white it looks so good even the slots are white usually they leave the slots like silver still but this time they made it all white perfect for an all white build like this so this has three slots and it has two eight pins we're going to have to remove one more rear slot before we can test fit this so i'm going to do that now undo this screw open it up and here are your screws for your rear slots take the rear slot out and look at this look at the clearance here just right don't forget to remove your pcie protector install in the top slot Okay, I'm just going to make sure that I line it up right. There we are. Perfect. Look at the clearance. It just clears it. That's so good. So compact. Looks so good. One screw for now, just to hold the graphics card in place. Look at that. That looks so good, guys. I'm thrilled about this build, guys. It just looks so bloody good. This needs to plug in so that the ports are on the top. Because my GPU cables weren't lining up right, I had to redo this. Put a zip tie around here so it keeps the cable together. Okay, we'll do it to both of them. Keep your eight pins together. And always use separate eight pins. Never piggyback when you're using a more powerful graphics card. 
don't just piggyback just because a cable has two eight pins does not necessarily mean it's going to be good for the graphics card these must come in upside down like this so that when i bend them in the tabs will be at the top like this so that's how i will push them through just like this just like that now we will plug them in as you can see here see what i meant by how the tab had to be at the bottom because when i go to plug it in they end up at the top of the graphics card like this perfect that's how i wanted it now look you could always use white sleeved cables here but if the person wants that then i'll do that looking good that's how it's going to sit zip tie there There we go. Just make sure all our cables are nicely tucked in flat so that we will close our case nice and easily. I'm gonna test fit our back case first just to ensure that it does close easily and then we'll continue. Look at that. That fits so well. Stays nice and flat, nice and flush. And that's exactly what you want. Now, if you want to check out the specs to this, then uh, I'll be sure to link the product specifications in the description. And it will also take you to a link to where you can buy one like this as well. So this is basically it. That's how it's going to look. Now, when I look at the picture, I always look how they have installed the hoses. And that's the way that you should also have your hoses as well they've already installed the fans for you let's check out our mounts this said it was lga 17 ready here we have a splitter cable which allows you to plug into one pwm connector and then it splits into three fans for each fan and it seems here that you do have a 1700 and an am4 am5 they give you some thermal paste in this case we're going to need the am5 because that's what we're going to be installing we don't need any of this as this is the 1700. First impression, it looks pretty good. Feels very solid. Not too bad at all for a 360 AIO. Always remember about this warning sticker, you must remove it. Undo all the fans, right? And usually this is set to exhaust. The fan will blow air through the radiator. I'm going to install it onto the top of my PC case. So I want the exhaust fans to blow hot air out of the PC case. We've got a piggyback style connector, meaning that it's a lot easier to connect it. You just keep connecting these to each other and then you connect the last cable onto your motherboard or your hub, whichever the case may be. This is the way that it would install into the PC case. So if you imagine the case is here, just like in the picture that they showed, this will install like that. As you can see here, I do have room for a 360, but I have to remove this power supply down. What I need to do now is move this lower so that I can install the radiator. So the radiator is about this thick with the fan, meaning I need that much more room up here. So in order to adjust this, I need to move this power supply down lower. I'm just gonna test fit the radiator now. The radiator does fit. You can't just come in straight, but you know that it does fit because it also says so in the user manual. So in order to get this in, you need to come in on an angle like that and see how it's just missing by a little bit. Angle it down and then push it on in. And now your radiator fits. Firstly, we need to install this onto our AIO. So to install your bracket, it will come just like this inside the case. But if it doesn't, then make sure that you install it like this. You see how this curves upwards? That's going to be the top. This will install this way, like this. That's how that's going to mount. As for your screws, you only want to put them on a couple of turns. You do not want to tighten it down all the way. Loosen it off. So it's just on a few turns and do the same to the other side. And this is going to install this way because Thermalright's logo is this way up. First thing we're gonna do before we install it is remove this protective sticker. I can't stress how important it is to remove this. I'll even admit I've done it before where I've accidentally forgotten to remove this. We're going to apply some thermal paste. I'm not going to use the one that they give. I'm just going to use the Arctic MX6. Good reviews. I'm just going to use the X pattern. And that should suffice. And 
and that's more than enough. Right, so now we can install this. Put it on loose and then I clamp one side on first. There we are, that side's on and then I get this side on. When I push it down, I ensure that I've already got one side on, which is going to be this side, the bottom side. And then when that is on, I hold it down and I simply just escort this one over the top and push it on. Right, so right now you can see that it's not on yet. So when I push it down, I ensure that I've already got one side on, which is going to be this side, the bottom side. And then when that is on, I hold it down and I simply just escort this one over the top and push it on. And that's it. Once you have it on, you want to just tighten it ever so gently, both sides. And that's basically it. That's how easy it is to install it. Before I install the radiator, I want to route the cables first. Push it on through, ready to install. There we go. Guide our cables through. So here's my middle cable. I'm going to push it through the middle. And this is going to be my far right cable. So that's going to be tucked in here. And then we have our last one, which is our far left here. Just going to push that through here. It's just easier with open space. So that's why I'm doing it now. I can now set in the radiator. I go all the way to the right and then I slightly go down so that it clears this. Make sure you clear everything else like the RAM and sit it in. So here are the screws that they give you. Here I'm just going to put in a couple of screws just to hold the radiator in place. Here were our cables earlier. We're just going to pull them through now. Here that is cable there and this cable right. Here. I just want to show you guys how you connect the cables. They give you a splitter. It just makes it a lot easier to plug in all your fan cables rather than looking for a separate port for each. So this will go into one PWM connector, fan header connector. It's down the bottom here. I'm going to plug it in one of those. Our CPU fan here will run the one straight off the pump. That's better. So I'm able to push this all the way over and still be able to use the rear exhaust fan. With all the cables through, we can now plug in all our cables. So we'll plug this into the bottom fan header and we work our way up. Plug that in there. And then plug it into one fan header. Now for your RGB, you have four. So just daisy chain like that. And then we're left with the furthest fans, five volt, three pin ARGB connector. And then we plug that into the RGB header. And this is the fan that comes off the pump. We're going to push that in here so we can plug into our CPU fan one header. Here is our five volt, three pin. We're going to push that in through here so we can plug into the five volt, three pin header. Here is the fan connector that comes off the pump itself and here is our CPU fan number one. We'll plug that in just like that. Our 5 volt 3 pin just here is going to plug in right here. You can see there's a white and a grey. The grey is the 5 volt and the white is the 12 volt. So you want to plug it into the grey one which only has three pins. You basically are just matching up how many pins you have. It has two pins on the bottom and one pin on the top. Line that up and plug it in. Let's tidy up some cables now. Just to make it a bit neater, I've just separated the cables. I'm going to tidy up the AIO cables a bit more. And then I'll cut off all these zip ties. We'll install back the graphics card and give it a test run. Just add a zip tie. Tighten it. We can cut off all these zip ties because they're really in the way anyways and it will look a whole lot better. Before we finish it and test it, Let's just install the rest of the radiator screws. Here 
that is all done we can now have a look at what it looks like fully lit up whoa look at that now that looks badass what do you reckon guys i think that looks really really nice and honestly i i love the way that it complements the case sometimes it's hard to find a aio that is the same color white as the case but the fact that this aio is the exact same color as this case is just a bonus all right so now that we do have the aio completely installed we have our cables routed our cable management is pretty much done looking good we can now install our bottom intake fans so we're going to use thermal right ones now as well because why not match it all we'll get them all out i'm going to take all the cables off okay and we're going to install them on the bottom all three and then one more at the back with all the cables taken out of their twist ties we'll now remove the bottom filter and this is how it comes off it is magnetic so you just pull on it and that comes off just like that we want them as intake so the fan blows this way through here so the cool air comes in this way or hot air whatever and it blows this way just know that the direction of flow is this way meaning we want it in this way we'll route our cables in let's go through the the back there Let's see where I can get this through. Just through here. Like that. Yep, that's good. And then now we will install our fan. We can get all these cables out the way so we can get our fan in. Now we've got our fan in. We don't want anything directly on top of the fan so that it will block the fan from spinning. Okay, it's very important. So there, I've got my fan in now. So I'll install some screws just to hold it in place. Next fan. Now this one can go into the bottom gap here, right here, down there. To sit our fan in, pull it on through the other side. So that we'll pull the other one over through as well. And there we go. Both cable fans are pulled through, so now we can sit this one in. Our last fan. There you go. And then we'll go the other side and pull them on through. Just pull them through now. I'll just put in the screws to hold it first. As you can see here, I've just got all the screws started. Now I'm going to spread them out evenly. The SATA cable that I had pushed in here, I'm gonna have to take out because it's in the way of my fan. Pull it all the way through. That's what we'll do. We'll just leave it here like that. All right, there we go. I'm just gonna guide this through here. Just like that. We'll also come through here, just like that. Now, so as you can see, this is from the fan closest to the back of the case. This is the center fan and this is the fan at the front. Now I've got this room, I can slide this all the way to the front, is, which is where I want it because I want to, the fans are gonna be furthest to each side and then the center one will just sit in between both of them equally. Make sure you remove the feet in order to get your fan right to the end of your case so that you're covering the whole entire case. Same goes for the one on the right side as well, which I'll show you in just a second. All right, there we go. As you can see here, it's not allowing me to get to the screw if I push it all the way to the end. So that's why you need to remove this here, okay? And once you remove that, you can then push your fan all the way to the end, like that, where I want it. Now that we have it where we want it, we can now center the middle fan. So I'm just going to put an even space on each side so that it is perfectly centered and we'll screw it in. So I'll just tighten it all down. Store back our stands. You'll see that this has two tabs on it. And if you look at the bottom of the case, it has two tabs in which it goes in. Just like that. And then put your screw back in. Same to the other side. It can only go in one way because you have the tabs that you need to follow. 
if you look here you also have two more fan screw holes so you're able to install 140 fans if that's what you wanted but you can only install two that's the difference and if you were to install two 140 fans these other mounting holes are for a 3.5 inch hard drive now let's flip this around and let's take care of some cable management and where we're going to plug it in we're going to use this fan header and then this 5 volt 3 pin header that way we wrap both our cables to one section and plug them in everything will join to these two cables in the end we'll daisy chain all our fans this comes from the furthest fan now from the, the middle to the end point which is here and then we'll plug this into the fan header now for our 5 volt 3 pin pull up our cover we'll plug our furthest fan in here into the center one and the center one into the one that's closest to the 5 volt RGB port just like that and then we'll plug this in here we'll now push it in through here so they can be plugged in head out right here fan header in as you can see that's where our cables are plugged in right there now we can actually sort out the cables just like this we can cut these off we'll tuck this in between like that and that will stay right there all done fans installed now we just have one more left which is the rear fan right here i really wanted to use another thermal right fan because why not keep every single fan the same but i don't have another one in stock at the moment i have to wait for it to arrive so i'm not going to install it now but i will be installing another one in the back corner right here i'm just going to leave it like this we'll install the graphics card now and we'll put the case fully Back together right so this is a little bit silly but it's kind of the way it has to go in order for me to get this gpu back in i'm gonna have to temporarily remove the power supply and yes it is a bit of a pain but it's also a necessity so i can get the graphics card in so as you can see no matter how i try to angle it right now it won't go in but if i move the power supply a little bit i'm able to just get the graphics card in as you can see, I'm able to just get it in. And then once I get it in, it clears it. And then I'm able to install the graphics card just like this and push it in. Because we now have installed the bottom fans, it really is a pain having to remove the power supply just to get the GPU in or out. Because as you can see, there's no way of getting it out either now. I just removed the two screws here and I raised the power supply. I'm just going to make sure the GPU is screwed down because I don't want to move the case around and then the graphics card pops out or breaks. GPU's in. Now we can reinstall our power supply. So as you can see, we're still in the second last mount right here. We'll put in our two screws at the front. And there we are. All in. Everything's in now. We just have to plug in our graphics card. And now install all the screws. All right, screws in. We'll close our rear slot. Let's put our magnetic dust filter back on. There we go. We'll reinstall our panel here. This goes on like this. And then you install your four screws. You basically now have an all white build because it's now covering the power supply so you barely see it. If you're looking at just like this, like the camera seeing it right now, you can't really see this. Now to just install our front panels and we'll then install the rest of the pieces like our two side cases and our top panel and we are done. Before we install the front panel, let's quickly have a look at it and get an understanding of what it is. Here is our front panel, our digital display screen for the front panel. And as you saw when I wrapped with the cables to the front here, the reason why your cables needed to come here is because here is your 
power connector type C and that is your display cable. Now all you have to do is plug them in just like this. There we go. Now that that's in, we can now just push it straight back on. It will click into place. When you do push this back in, if there's too much flex in the cable, it's probably going to break the port. Push it in. I'm going to just take a quick look and I can see that the cable bends in perfectly. So when I push it in, it just comes back enough. There is a plus a negative symbol here and a power symbol. Put our side panel back on. This tab here goes to the top. And you have this slot here that needs to slot into the bottom rail. We'll line that up, press down so it locks in and then push it straight in. Side panels back on. Then we have the panel just below our front display screen. It just simply pushes on because they have all these tabs that just push in and out. Line up your holes, push it straight down. Now let's install our tempered glass panel. It also has a slot here which needs to slide onto here so you install slightly on an angle first slide it on until it sits in make sure that it does slide on very important and then just push it down lastly we just have our top panel piece you've got these screws here that need to slide into here you start from the back come forward till it falls into place like that and just push it straight forward and screw in your two thumb screws at the back. That completes our build. For our display screen to work, we need to plug in our HDMI. I just had to give myself a little bit more slack because if you look at the back here, your USB has to be long enough to plug into a USB port. Now, I didn't want to waste it on a USB 3 port in case whoever wants to run a external hard drive and HDMI for this right here. Then we'll use a display port for our monitor. That is the end result of our cable management. Make sure our holes line up and just push it straight on. Check that nothing is bulging out, that the panels are in fact flush. Plug in our power cable. And now to have a look at our final result. As you can see, all the fans do sync. Even when you look at it from front angle, you don't see the power supply because it's covered by this nice panel here really helps bring out the all white build yes you could put white sleeved cables but overall this ended up being an awesome build it looks so nice gotta love the way the hellhound logo lights up all the fans sinking and just the all white build and how everything white complements this entire build and pairing a Ryzen 7 7700X with the 7900XTX is going to be a beast of a PC for 1440p gameplay. What do you guys think? First thing you need to do is install the AMD graphics driver. I mean, right now it is running, but that's fine. But you're only using the integrated graphics, which isn't all that great. It's only like 512 megabytes. What we need to do is install the AMD driver. Now I've already downloaded it, but if you had to download it, you simply go to Explorer, type in AMD, and then you go down to AMD driver and support. From here, you go down to graphics, and then you select 7000. In this case, we have the 7900 series. Select 7900, 7900 XTX. Submit it, and it will show you Windows 11 version, Windows 10 version, which is what we're running. We don't want to auto detect and install. We want to download the adrenaline version. You simply click download, and it starts downloading. That's it. I've already got this installed because I downloaded it earlier. And then double click on this and install. Click install. It will now simply install it. And after you're done, you will see the screen flicker slightly. That's because it's just registering the software to the graphics card. And then it will give you a slightly better picture immediately because you are now running the graphics card software. All right, so as you can see now, the installation is complete. We'll now restart it. The software will be installed and you will see how much better the display is. Now, when you right click, you will see AMD software. From here, you're able to customize your monitor now. All that good stuff. So you notice how it has a red box around it. And when you go to display one, this monitor has a box around it. It's letting you know when you click on it, which display screen 
you are customizing.